Kidnapping of students in Nigeria continue to threaten education in the country where about 10.5 million children aged 5 to 14 years are out of school. The Kuriga incident raises lots of questions about why the school was targeted. Sifon Asian reports. The Kuriga school children are reveling in the euphoria of freedom days after being reunited with their families following a harrowing 16 days in captivity. Great efforts are being made to keep them away from the media spotlight even though the event of Thursday the 7th of March has put the spotlight on their community. The kidnapping of the school children in Kuriga is the 75th since the Chibok school girls in 2014. The incident raises lots of questions at the time the federal government is implementing a multi-agency action to keep schools safe. Safe school initiative, um, as far as I'm concerned, is not working. Uh, if it were working, we would see what we are seeing. So it's as simple as that. We have to devise another means or rather we have to you know, uh, reinvigorate that particular initiative. But for now, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Kuriga's proximity to Beriningwari, a hotbed of banditry in Kaduna State, is already an indication that the community and its primary and secondary schools were vulnerable. Did you see the video or the photograph of those, that, that school, that Kundiga school? You could see a horrible school environment, dilapidated, without fences, the children are on their, you know, their own devices, and, and they're like sitting dogs. Terrorists can walk in any time and pick the students. That's exactly what happened. Looking back at the incident, security risk management and intelligence expert Kabir Adamo is curious about how the school children were conveyed to Dansadao Forest in Zamfara State where they were eventually recovered. A day after the incident, I personally become security and intelligence limited. We got to know that it was a bandit from Zamfara that carried out. And when we looked at the map, we saw that they were he had two options. He had to take them to the Brunungwari area where because of tough war, he does not have control over that. He's going to have to contend with the other bandits that are operational there. And the other option was for him to take them all the way back to Zamfara. And when we reached our conclusion, we said it must be Zamfara. And so if our security agencies had done such an analysis, it would have been very easy for them to also have concluded. You can't achieve 290 kilometers on foot. How many days do you need to achieve 290 kilometers on, on, on foot? Um, with kids who are tired, who are probably hungry, who would be missing their parents and would not be cooperating in the manner that the bandits would want. So there must have been some form of mobility. Um, so point is, uh, certain security agencies drop their ball. Another question he's trying to find answers to is the reason for the kidnapping of the 137 school children and their teacher. Been weather fortunate misfortunate or unfortunate to have listened to uh, uh, a telephone conversation of the main bandit behind the incident and he referred to the killing of their cows by specifically according to him the military he said uh, their cows were targeted by the military and that they killed their cows and that um, nobody has been uh, how, what did he put it has shown uh, compassion or uh, sympathize with them over that incident that for them the only profession they know is livestock rearing and if those livestock are taken away from them then their lives are, are destroyed. Now it does not justify his action because is it the children that uh, killed his cattle? No it's not the children but the point he was trying to make is that somebody needs to listen to him and the only way he felt he could be listened to is for him to, to do that. So again, I think we need to conduct a sociological research into the reasons for these occurrences and then try to address them. Like I always say, one major uh, vulnerability we have is allowing these guys access to weapons. The incident represents another setback to education development in a country where primary education is officially free and compulsory, but about 10.5 million children aged 5 to 14 years another school attack on schools uh, is attack on our education and it's quite concerning the whole world is watching and um, it does not say good about us as a country the government must be intentional on how to get around this situation time has come forward to say enough is enough mass abduction of students 
uh, uh, school populace in the north or anywhere for that matter is something that should be behind us. In the meantime, residents of Kuriga resorted to hope and prayer that such a cruel fate would not befall them again. Sifon Asian TVC News, Abuja.